there. Today I'm going to be sharing what we did for Easter and also what we had for dinner this week. For our first meal, I'm putting some beef stew meat into the crock pot. For this meal, I'm using a big pack of beef stew meat and one pack of brown gravy mix. I'm adding a half a box of beef broth. The meat will make its own juices, but I wanted a little bit more for flavor. One can of diced green chilies and a couple of tablespoons of minced garlic. Then I just top it off with one sliced onion. The one thing I forgot to do was add salt and pepper. I wish I had, but we just added it at the end. Once I put the lid on, I just forgot about it for four hours. Next, I'm just giving it all a stir so that the onions get a chance to mix in and go toward the bottom of the pot now that there's room and the broth is looking really nice, but it's not the gravy that I want yet. So I will be adding a cornstarch slurry to this. And by uh, to make this, I just used one of these little juice size mason jars, which probably holds about a cup of water and added about two or three tablespoons of cornstarch and mixed it all in. And this will get the gravy to the consistency that I like. So while that's cooking, um, I just wanted to pop on here and show you these Sister Schubert's yeast rolls and the directions on the back. Um, pretty easy, you just put them in the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes and they're really, really good. And so I just heated up a can of green beans and made some instant mashed potatoes. I used milk in place of the water and I would not recommend that because it did make them gummy. So mashed potato, instant mashed potatoes aren't my favorite, but in a pinch they did the job. And this is my finished play, and I did get lots of compliments from even the kids. Uh, Cameron said that this was really good, and he actually thanked me for making it. He's a really picky eater, so I was pretty proud of that. Every now and then we take a break from cooking, and on this night we just had Chinese takeout. And on the next night, I used the leftover white rice that came with our Chinese food to make these unstuffed cabbage rolls. I started by browning up this ground beef in a skillet. Here I'm adding some garlic powder and some onion powder. Some pink Himalayan salt and some diced onions that we had saved from a different day. Next, I added some cut up smoked sausage. And a bag of coleslaw mix. I'm stirring that all around so that the meat and the cabbage all gets cooked together. Once the ground beef is cooked through and the cabbage is softened, then I'll drain the grease off of it and then return it back to the pan. 
Then I added a can of fire roasted tomatoes and a small can of diced green chilies. Here I'm adding a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste in the tube. And about a can of water. This will reconstitute the um, tomato paste and the white rice that I'm adding to this dish. I added a pinch of crushed red pepper to this uh, dish also because we like the little extra kick that it gives. And here it is after the rice has been added and it's simmering just to get all the flavors cooked through. And then this is after it's cooled down some and everything is thickened up. Next, I'm making pickled eggs. It's something that my grandma always made around Easter time, only she would use the, um, the, the brine out of pickled beets and just use that for her eggs. I've made them like that in the past and they always turned out well, but this time I wanted to try a recipe. I found the recipe on Pinterest for spicy pickled eggs. So I'm starting by adding two cups of water and then two cups of white vinegar into a mason jar. The original recipe called for four cups of water and four cups of vinegar so I thought I would cut it in half since I wasn't planning on making that many eggs. So here I'm adding some minced garlic the recipe called for six cloves of garlic or more if you choose and it looks like I am doing quite a bit of garlic there and so then I did a couple of tablespoons of peppercorns and then a big teaspoon or two of kosher salt. Again I'm not actually going by the recipe So here I am putting in a lot of crushed red pepper and some red food coloring. I gave it all a big stir and then decided that it wasn't actually going to fit in this quart sized jar so I found two of the Pioneer Woman spaghetti sauce jars that I had just recently used and I filled them each halfway so there would be room for the eggs. And this worked out so much better. The little lids that go to the jars actually look pretty Easter-y. And here I am putting the eggs into the liquid. And then I just put these in the fridge after giving them a good shake. And they were good by the next day. The eggs were nice and pink and just like my grandma made. <laughs> On Saturday, we got together with our kids and our grandkids for an Easter egg hunt.
We had a very simple Easter dinner at home on Sunday. And all I did was make what I could find in my pantry. I had only gone shopping to buy a ham before Easter. And so I had some potatoes. I had a couple of packs of mushroom gravy and some green beans. So what I did was I fried up a couple strips of bacon that I had in my freezer. Once that bacon was crispy, I took it out of the pan. I poured off some of the bacon grease and used a little bit of it to saute or simmer these green beans using a little bit of the green bean liquid. And then once it had cooked, I added the crispy bacon back on top. The trick is not to mix it in unless you want that bacon to get soft again. I didn't show me making the mashed potatoes. It was very simple mashed potatoes this time. Just boiled the potatoes, add some milk and butter, and then mashed them up with my hand masher. And our ham was from Sam's. It was the Members Mark brand. And I went with the dry glaze option where you just open the pack and rub it on the ham and put it in between the slices. And everybody thought it was just so wonderful and it was very tasty. I would definitely buy that again. It was definitely the star of the show. So here I am taking the ham out of the oven. Note to self, buy a roasting pan. The ham barely fit in this dish that I put it in. And then I was in danger of the liquid overflowing. But this ham was so good. There were no leftovers except the bone. For dessert, I made a strawberry poke cake. So I made a strawberry cake and poked holes with the spoon in it. Then I poured strawberry jello over the top of it. I prepared this exactly on the instructions on all of the box mixes that I used. I didn't use all of the jello. I'm sorry that my hand is in the way. I did not realize that you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. So this is the cake, and then when it was done, I put the cheesecake flavored pudding on top, and my cake fell over on its side, but it was delicious. And here's my plate. I have a pickled egg on mine. It was so good. You can see more videos in the future. Bye.